we can tend to get discouraged often by our circumstances. This happens because our perspectives are limited. Intellectually, we know that God's perspectives are higher than ours, but actually believing that in a way that impacts our emotions can be challenging. Jesus modeled praying for God's kingdom rather than our own. Join me in praying for God's kingdom today. Lord, I confess that my own ambitions, my own plans, and my own aspirations get in the way of seeing clearly. I confess that my perspectives are limited, whereas yours are infinite. I also confess that at my core, I want what I think is best for me, while you want what you know is best for me. So Lord, in light of this, I pray your kingdom come and not mine. I lay my own thoughts and feelings down for what is best for myself, for my family, for my friends and for my neighbors, and instead ask that your will be done in these areas. For I know that it is in your kingdom where true life is found, and I admit that I don't know what you know. May your kingdom come, Lord, and may I see where you are at work even when I doubt. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Yeah. 
know Proverbs, it says that the source of revelation knowledge is in our surrender. It's in our cry, it's in our bowing low before the Lord. But then we also have a gentle rebuke that says, don't expect to see the glory of God until the Lord has seen your sincere humility. God, we need revelation knowledge. We need your glory. We need you. So as our first step, we bow in surrender. Our first step, God, is to cry out to you. We need you, Jesus. We need more understanding of your grace. We need more of an understanding of your mercy. We need to be reminded of the truth and be reminded that it is upon you that we stand, your faithfulness, Jesus, your legacy. So we humble ourselves and we ask God that you would search us, that you would know us, that you would point out anything in us that doesn't fit. We don't want it because we want room for your glory. So we make room for you today. Holy Spirit, we ask you pour yourself out upon this place. Spirit out, rushing wind, fire of God, fall within. Holy Ghost, breathe on us, we pray. As we repent and turn from sin, Yeah. 
Hey, welcome to Sandals Church. My name is Morgan, and I'm so glad that you're here. One of the coolest things about Sandals Church is that we have 14 physical locations, but we also have people like you joining in from all over the world, from Sandals Church Anywhere, or just watching online. We even have Sandals Church Anywheres in three different continents, which is just awesome. Uh, a lot of the reason why this is able to happen on a week-to-week -week basis is because of the generosity of the people that call Sandals Church their home or feel compelled to give through the ministry of what God is doing here. And so if that's you, if you feel compelled to give, or if you're someone that gives on a weekly basis, let me first say thank you. And if you want to take part in that today, you can go to give.sc or you can give to Sandals Church through our Sandals Church app. So let me again just say thank you so much. We're about to continue on in our series called How to Pray, so come join me. Hey, Sandals Church, what is going on? It's about to go down. Hey, I want to give a shout out to all of our 13 in-person campuses all over California. How you guys doing? It's good to see you. It's good to see you. Um, our Sandals Church Espanol. Hola. Hola. Hey, come on now. Hey, hey. Me llamo Efe. Jefe, jefe, yes, me, I'm a jefe. Uh, the, the people that I get to pastor, those who watch all over the world, our Sandals Church online campus, as well as, as, well as those who, who went from watching online to inviting others to your home to become one of our 16 Sandals Church Anywhere locations uh, in the U.S., Canada, the United Kingdom, and Australia. What up, mate? Um, come on, let, let's all just give a big round of applause for what God is doing all over the world through Sandals Church. Yeah. Amen. And to some very special people, to my dads, hey, happy Father's Day, everybody. I am so glad to see you all. For, for, for some of you, it's been a minute, dads. It's been a minute since you've been here, but, but, but you're here. I'm so glad you're here. And, and you know what? Jesus is glad you're here. Amen. Dads, men, just being here, you are already turning the statistic around. I recently read an article in the Washington Post that actually said, what do Jesus Christ, Muhammad, Siddhartha, Gautama, and Moses all have in common? Besides being religious figures, they are all men. Yet looking around the world, the majority of their followers are women. Research reports that, that when it comes to worshiping, giving financially, tithing, and, and serving in the church, women widely outdo men in all those things. Someone said, I already knew that. But, but then I continued to research and, and found out that, that one of the reasons is actually biological, that due to the high testosterone levels in men, they are more about taking risk, which to them, the church has very little risk. But then I thought, well, well, evangelism, right? Evangelism and mission, going overseas, uh, that's got to be more men because that's, that's pretty risky. Nope, still women outdo men. This religious gender gap is even worse in the United States, which is much more religious than, in general than, than any other advanced economies. We've got some of the lowest male participation than most countries. According to Pew Research, Pew Research, 64% of American women, but only 40% of American men say that they pray daily. And that male percentage is dropping today. Every single day it's continues to drop. Wow. Ted, I don't like where this is going. I don't either, Walter. I don't either. <laughs> but listen to me, it's all true. But, but, but just hang on. But just hang on to me. But be, think of me like a coach today. I'm going to be your coach. Come on. I, I've never been a coach. Well, I've been a coach of my, uh, of my kid's soccer team, and that didn't go to well. But, but uh, <laughs> imagine I'm your coach, you know. But, but trust me, I'm going to leave you inspired by the time, by the time we are done today. I think I actually know why men generally are losing interest in the church. But, but I'm actually going to come back to that a little bit later. If you are new, we are in a series called How to Pray. And no matter what your faith, we all need to pray more or communicate with, 
with, with or spend time with, with your God, whoever that may be, or that spiritual being that you believe in. For us followers of Jesus Christ, I'm, I'm going to come back to this idea of why I believe the church of Jesus is made up of more women than men and what in the world that has to do with prayer. But with that, let's pray. Lord, Father, thank you so much, Lord. Thank you for everything. You are God and you're God alone. I pray we desire to to be who you call us to be and that you'd work through our lives. What Whatever you want to do and whatever you want to give and reveal to us today, Lord, I pray that we will get out our own way, our own sinful way, and let you do what you do best. Father, help us to to show love to others. We pray that, that we will do what you have called us to do and to be people who follow you and no one else. Whatever you have for us in this moment, Father, I pray that we would not only receive it, dear God, but we apply it to our lives. God, Holy Spirit, have your way. This is your time. This is your space. We are your people. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Well, when when it comes to how we pray, I I, want to give you some some thoughts and a brief general overview. I I want you to know that that one of the number one ways in which we communicate with God is through prayer, in prayer, by praying. Let me tell you something. Prayer does change things. Prayer changes things. We see this all throughout the Bible. One evidence is is in the letter of James chapter five, verse 13. He says, He says, are you suffering? Are you sick? Are you in sin? With faith, pray and God will heal you and he will forgive you. Our main series passage in in Luke 11, 2, located in the New Testament uh, of the Bible, the writer recorded Jesus saying, not if, not maybe, but when you pray. Friends, we should be praying. God wants to hear from you and, and he wants to speak to you. We mainly communicate to God through, through our verbal and, and nonverbal, our, our mental way of communicating. And we also, we also communicate in how we live our lives because even your actions are speaking to God. Right. But know that God desires to speak back to us. As James 4, 8 lets us know, that as we get near to God, that he actually gets near to us. He speaks to us. He communicates to us. He wants to get a message to us. Yeah. He speaks How does God speak to us? He speaks to us through his word, the Bible. How does he speak to us? He speaks to us through prayer. Sometimes we, sometimes we actually stop talking and just listen. We we just listen. You know, the late mother Teresa knew this when, when Dan Rather interviewed her and asked her about her, her prayer life and what that looked like. And she said, well, I listened to God. And then he said, what does God said? Uh, What does God say? And she says, God listens. And then he, he didn't have anything to say. Like, well, you're listening and he's listening. What was that? And she said, if you can't understand that, then I have nothing else to say. Mother Teresa was gangsta. (laughs) Come on. (laughs) Romans 8, Romans 8, 26 says, the spirit helps us in our weakness. We do not know what we ought to pray for, but the spirit himself intercedes for us through wordless groans. And he who searches our hearts knows the mind of the spirit because the spirit intercedes for God's people in accordance with the will of God. Mother Teresa was deep in the spirit of God moving in her life. And when God does speak, write it down, maybe. I I mean, journal it. I actually personally suck at this. Um, I almost never do it. But when I do, as Jesus, as See Jesus Ministries lets us know that, that actually helps us to reveal Jesus and what he's been doing in our lives, seeing the prayers that he's answered, the yes, the no, and the waits. God speaks to us through his spirit. He speaks to us through his Holy Spirit. He speaks to us through dreams, through visions, through worship. Maybe God spoke to you today in worship. He's speaking to you right now through the message. He's speaking to you uh, through trusted individuals. He speaks through past experiences. We have to listen, listen. That was a test. (laughs) That was a test. Maybe you're not even listening to God. God wants you to talk to him. The question is, 
Are you listening? Are you praying? We've already talked about this, but but some of the reasons why we don't pray, we don't pray is because we don't think prayer is working or, or we're too busy. We, uh, we, we don't see it as a priority. There, there's no connection or, or, or we're intimidated by this idea of prayer. And maybe that's because we've seen prayer done a lot of time by pastors, right? And people in authority, uh, we, 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 we see them acting or performing, seeming like they have some special connection to God or maybe these special words that only God can hear. So now when it's your turn to pray, you're embarrassed or you feel inadequate. Jesus actually said, don't be like them because at the heart of their prayer is not to connect with God, but to perform and to be praised. In fact, Jesus said they've already received their reward. What's the reward? The praise they get from people. They're not gonna get their praise from heaven. They're not gonna get to receive the reward from heaven. And some people are praying out of an empty relationship with God. I mean, even as a pastor, I do this. I have, pr- I have prayed sometimes to, 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 to be recognized and to be praised as an awesome prayer pastor. Oh, that, that pastor sure can pray. I, I mean, I, I have been that individual. I, I've been the individual that, that just wanted to say it as fast as I can just to get it out of the way and, and just kind of move on. It wasn't genuine. I, I acted like I didn't even know God. Yes, I as a pastor. And, and, and as a Christian, maybe you have prayed like my friend and brother, Taylor. Check out this clip. All right, Father, God bless you. Sweet nurse, through our bodies, in Jesus' name, amen. Daddy, God, we just thank you so much um, for our time together. And I pray you bless the food and um, give us a budget because we don't really have one right now. Oh my goodness, is that dairy? And we pray that uh, as we eat the food, Lord, that you would uh, do something new in us. Also, I thank you that next week when I go to the grocery store, Lord, you're going to give me uncommon favor um, with my Costco membership. You know, it's past expired. So, hey, Taylor, say grace. Um, Father God, please bless this food and nourish it through our bodies. And uh, forgive me of my sins. In Jesus' name. We thank you for this food, God. We thank you for the hands that prepare this food. And we pray that you would bless them both, God, and do something at this meal, God, that has never been done. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, man. Come on. If one of those scenarios were you at one point, raise your hand. Come on, raise your hand. If that's ever been you, come on. Come on now. The rest of you are lying. I, I, I've, never been that, I, I've never been that preacher. That, that's never been me. <laughs> hey, come on, guys. Be nice. Be nice. As Pastor Fredo said a few weeks ago, just start praying. But, but, but I, don't, I don't know if I'm doing it right. Are you praying? Is it genuine? Then you're doing it right. Just start Friends, we are all on a journey. We need to remember that. We're all on a journey growing in our faith and and just like anything else, we can get better. And listen, you will get better at prayer. Just keep on praying. And and, and I actually personally think, I personally think that that any time is okay to talk to God because he's always talking. But, But there is, I gotta tell you, there is something special. Come on, there is something special about getting away, closing the door, getting away from everyone else and the distractions and spending time with just you and the Lord in prayer. It's a beautiful and rich thing. We read that Jesus did this all throughout his ministry. And, and can, I, can I say this? Let's not criticize each other. Last week after Pastor Matt got done preaching, um, I was here at Hunter Park and, and I went out into the lobby and a guy, that, a guy that used to go to the church where I was a youth pastor at years ago, turned, uh, he, he said, hey, Jeff, did you, did, you, did you hear the message? I'm like, yeah. He said, he said remember, remember, remember how you used to pray? And he started making fun of me of how I used to pray 10 years ago. Thank you, follower of Jesus Christ. That <laughs> comment made me feel real good. And I know it came from a place of love. And, and I wonder why we have issues praying in private or public. Am I doing it right? Am I going to get ridiculed? These Jewish guys asked Jesus, Lord, teach us how to pray. If, 
If there was anything that these Jewish men should know how to do, it should have been pray. They prayed three times. They, they, they prayed something called the Shema. I, I want you to know that, that Jesus didn't tell these guys on the first day of Jesus school how bad they were at prayer. He, 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 didn't, he didn't start cracking up like, ha, 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 is that how you pray? <laughs> you moron. You call yourself Jewish, more like foolish. No, he didn't do that. I, I mean, look, look at how Jesus responded. He was ready to teach them. And, and, and you know, you know he saw them pray many times before but he never criticized them. No, Jesus met them where they were at and he met them with compassion and care, an attribute I wish we had more of as Christians today. God wants to communicate with you. He wants to be in relationship with you. Praise God, praise God, praise God that he's allowing you, he's allowing us into the throne room. In this series, How to Pray, we are going to download a lot to help you to know how to pray. But listen, we're not going to be able to cover it all. There's, there's no way. At the end of the day, at the end of the day, at the end of the day, follow Jesus. And pray authentically, desiring to connect, understanding who you are praying to and what prayer really should be about. The disciples, the disciples were not automatically experts after Jesus recited this prayer to them. Their prayer life evolved with the years, with the struggles, and as they grew in their relationship with God. The disciples asked, Lord, teach us how to pray. Teaching does not come in one session. In fact, Jesus, the son of God, told the disciples in John 14, 26, that, that the Holy Spirit will remind you and teach you all the things that I have told you. The Holy Spirit is gonna remind you. The Bible the words of Jesus and the Holy Spirit is here to teach us this lifelong journey of understanding more and more of how God desires to communicate with us. Whew, that was just my intro. Okay, <laughs> don't get scared, don't get scared. Like, oh no. Um, so far we have covered, so far we've covered this uh, when it comes to uh, Lord uh, teaches how to pray, this series. Our Father, our Father. This lets us know that God desires community. He could have said, when you pray, say, my father. He said, no, pray our father. God is about community. He, he, he desire, and he desires you to call his father, father. That means there's intimacy there. I want you to know today on Father's Day that our father, our God is the best dad we could ever have. Amen. And then, and then we also covered who is in heaven. God is exalted in heaven, but, but that doesn't mean he's far. It doesn't mean he's far. He is, he is exalted up in heaven, but, but Psalms 138.6 uh, uh, lets us know that even though the Lord is high, he resides, uh, um, he attends to those who are low, earthly beings who, wants to, who want to be in a relationship with him. He is far, but he is near. Right. And, then, and then we tackled, hallowed be your name. Pastor Matt reminded us of this last week that God's name is holy, treat it as holy. Right. Around here, Sandals Church is big on honor. Honor is a big deal. Honor the Lord. On, and then today, we are gonna be talking about your kingdom come. Your kingdom come. If you dissect the Lord's prayer, the first part is, 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 is a setup actually. We first recognize who we are praying to, who we're talking to, and then start desiring something from him. It's a setup like who he is, and then we'll get to you. <laughs> you will know how to ask better and to pray for his will, not yours if you, yours the door, if you use the door handle and not push your way in disrespectfully. You're like, what do you mean by door handle? Door handle is like the honoring. Door handle is like, well, well you got to get to that before you get to something else. I remember, I remember the church I grew up at um, years ago in Maryland, the pastor's wife, AKA the first lady at the church. From time to time, she would, she would have to redirect people who would call her husband, the senior pastor, by his first name. They would say, hey, Bob. And you know what she would say? She said, you better put a handle on that. <laughs> meaning, meaning you don't just walk in saying his first name. That's Pastor Bob. Amen. Pastor Matt mentioned this not too long ago that, that there used to be a reverence with pastors that, 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 that this is, that, that's why they call us reverend, reverence, reverend. But these days we just dishonor pastors. And listen, I get why. I get why we might do that. But, but a good pastor would actually say after you call him pastor, hey, Pastor Jeff. And then a good pastor, hey, just call me Jeff. 
just call me Jeff. And listen, you may not want to do that with men, and I get that, but you don't do that with God. You don't do that. Today I'm going to introduce to you or maybe reintroduce to you the king. Jesus teaches us to pray, your kingdom come. Your kingdom come. Why would Jesus pray for his father's kingdom to come? Well, back then, I don't know if you know this, but there was a multitude of kingdoms and and all of them desired to be the first. The Jewish community was waiting for the kingdom. They're actually still waiting for the kingdom, most of them. In the United States, we don't get this because here we don't really have a kingdom. We don't really do anything like that. We have something called a democracy, a representative democracy. But all throughout the Bible, And how God relates to us and his people and how he operates is actually called a monarchy, a divine monarchy, which is there's there's got to be a king. There's a king and there's a rule and there's a reign that Jesus says that we should pray for and we should pray to come. Lord, help your reign and your rule to come, because as I look around is not happening. Our main passage today actually will be in Isaiah. Isaiah, Isaiah 6, 1 through 8. And we read, in, in the year that King Uzziah died, in the Old Testament, in the Old Testament, uh, uh, prophets were someone who, 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 who heard from God and did help to relay that message to God's people. In the year that King Uzziah, Uzziah died, Isaiah uh, uh, had, had a daytime vision and, and, and he's seeing this happen He says, I saw the Lord high and exalted, seated on the throne. Listen to me. God is on the throne. He's on the throne. Listen, I'm glad that this is Father's Day because I I, I have something to tell men and, and all of us. Listen, men, you are not the king. I don't care how big of the piece of chicken you get at dinner time. Your kingship. Your kingship is very little and is limited to to in your home with your family. And honestly, I think this is why one of the reasons why men don't come to church. We don't want to give up or submit to another king. And David Murrow's book, Why Men Hate Going to Church, it talks about a man's religion is masculinity. One of the number one attributes of masculinity is power and control. Men... We, we, we don't want to give up control. We, we, we don't, we don't want to, we, we don't want to act like that, that we know where the real power comes from. When, when the power comes from the Lord. We like being the king. We like being the king in, in, in which our spouse, our kids, our, our, our dogs can submit to us. I, I do this. I, I tell my dog what to do. I tell my kids what to do. I tell my wife what to do. That don't go so well a lot of times. Um, she's an Instagram eight, so, you know, I, she told me what to do. I think, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> you see, for men, for the most part, we want people to submit to us, but we don't want to submit to God. Yeah, sure. We, we might want to submit to you, possibly, but we don't, want to, we don't want to submit to God. You may be a king, but I know the king of kings. First, Timoth- First Timothy 6 and, and Revelation 19 tells us that there is a Lord of Lords in which his reign will never end. Right. Come on, we, we know this to be true, men. I got a question for you. Who... Who is the only one at the house that has a throne? It's either the recliner or it's the toilet. And everybody know it's your throne. (laughs) Who's the king of the castle? Dad. Dad is. And where do most dads sit at the table? They sit at the head of the table, right? Right. Dad's always got to sit at the head of the table. I remember our kids, they they were playing around me. Oh, dad, that's not the head of the table. That's the tail of the table, dad. uh, uh, That's the feet of the table. Daddy, that's the booty of the table. That's the booty of the table. I was like, shut up. No, I didn't say that. I wanted to say that. I want to say, shut your mouth right now. But I didn't say that. I didn't say that. (laughs) Lord, thank you, Jesus. Um, We're always about sitting at the, uh, at the, the, in fact, I I remember going to, you know, Buca de Beppo. I love that. I got a cousin named Buca de Beppo, but I remember going to Buca de Beppo and and they have this Pope table, right? You know, the Pope table is like a big round table. And I went to, I was like, where the head, where the head? Oh, what, what, what? what?" I'm like, where the head of the table? What? And I just kept scooting around until I found a head of the table. Like, I I think this is it. And so I'm like, oh, the Pope usually sit there. And I try to squeeze my way over there. That's what we do, men. Oh, we got to be at the head of the table. Hey, hey. Hey, family, when you eat dinner tonight with dad, tell dad that's the foot of the table. Well, maybe not on Father's Day. Tomorrow, tell him the, foot. Tell him the booty of the table. That's the booty. You said it's the booty of the table. 
Listen, and, and, and it's not, this isn't really bad. I get it, I get it. It's just the fact that your little monarchy, your little kingdom really doesn't have much power. Maybe men don't like going to church because we don't like not being the king. God is the king. And listen, he is the best king there is. It, 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 says, it, it says the train of his robe, the train of his robe filled the temple. The train of his robe filled the temple. I wish we really could understand that. The train of the robe filled the temple. Did you know that, that actually back then, uh, 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 that, that kings, when, when kings had their robes and they had this train that, that actually signified their power and authority, that actually, the longer the train, the, the, the more authority. And it says the train of his robe filled the temple, filled the house. Do you know that your body is the new temple of God? There is a heavenly temple, yes, but, but you need him to be on the throne of your life and let his train, his, his authority, his power fill you up. Let him take control, friends. And then it says, and then it says, above him were seraphim, which each, with each, uh, each having six wings. With two wings, they covered their faces. With two wings, they covered their feet. And with, and with other two wings, they were flying. They were doing their best. You got six wings and you're doing your best to fly with only two. That's what God will do. That's what God will do to you. When you're in the presence of God, you're like, oh, Lord, have mercy. Yeah, I, you know, and this is what was happening. And, and this is what they were saying. Listen, they were saying to one another, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. The whole earth is filled full with his glory. Listen, God is not holy. Uh, uh, uh. He's holy, holy, holy. Come on, that, there should be more amens on that. God is, I, I wish we knew what holy, holy means pure. Holy means set apart. Holy means perfect. Holy means divine. He is exalted. He is worthy of your praise. And, and he's not just holy. He's holy, holy, holy. He is mighty. His glory fills the whole earth. Glory, majesty, praise, splendor. Nature itself praises God. Psalm 96 in Luke 19 says, even nature praises God. My God, Jesus is not your homeboy. He is the Lord of Lords, the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. He is the first and the last. He is God all by himself. He is savior. He is sustainer. He is omniscient. He is omnipotent. He is all time. He's, a, he's made time, but he's out, outside of time. He is the author. He is the finisher and perfecter of our faith. He is God and he is our king. This is who God is. Man, I wish we knew. I wish we knew. Come on now. At the sound, listen to me, at the sound of their voices, the doorpost and the threshold shook and the temple was filled with smoke. Hey, you just thought worship was way too loud. You're like, this is too loud. The fog machine is too much. Listen, the fog machine in heaven is going to be hidden, and the bass is going to be pumping. I can't wait to sing, this is how I fight my battles. Come on, this is how I fight my battles. I can't wait. But you know, in heaven, it's going to be a different version. It's, it's going to be, this is how we won our battles. Come on, this is how we won. I can't wait to sing that. Come on, dude. Come on. It may look like Jesus is next to me because he is. I mean, this is what... Heaven's going to be like Isaiah saw what was going on. And he says, woe to me. Woe to me. I cried. I am ruined for I am a man of unclean lips. I live among people with unclean lips and my eyes, my eyes have seen the King, the Lord almighty. Listen, when you recognize the King, you recognize yourself. Woe to me. He says, Woe to me. I, I, I wish there was a Dave Chappelle version of the Bible because, because right here, there would, be, there would be a whole lot of expletives. Well, throughout the Bible, there'll be expletives the whole time. But I'm telling you right here, if you really knew, if you really knew what Isaiah said, he cussed right here. This brother cussed. He said, oh, hey. He says, I am a sinful, nasty, trashy, hot mess man. And I live around folk who are nasty and trashy, Lord. Look, he was so convicted, he ratted everybody out. Like, I ain't the only one, Lord. I ain't the only one. Everybody, everybody nasty down there. <laughs> but this is what happens. He feared, he feared the Lord and he recognized the Lord. That's what should happen when you have an encounter with God. It, it's the first part of wisdom, fear. 
There should be a healthy fear that comes over you. I actually remember going to the Grand Canyon when I lived in Arizona, I went to the Grand Canyon and I remember going to the railing and looking out I was like, oh my goodness, oh my, and there was, oh, there was an area where there was no railing and people over there <clears throat> who were white, but I was over here. <laughs> I was right here, like I'm gonna hold on to this railing, I'm gonna hold on to this railing. But I'm telling you, when I was there, you know what I thought? Oh my God, I'm, I could die right now. It, it, when I looked at the vastness and just the openness and, and, and the canyon itself, it, there, I, I felt fear. Even though there was a railing, I felt fear. You know the other thing I felt? I felt it was beautiful. It was, it was breathtaking. I was in awe. Isaiah experienced the same thing, but at a universal monumental level. And then by seeing God's purity, beauty, perfection, it just showed him how messed up he was. Man, ladies, have you ever seen a woman who's so beautiful and you stand next to her like, mm. <laughs> you, you don't feel so good about yourself. Oh, a brother, you stand next to a really, really attractive man. I, I, I mean, I, I, I want to like meet the rock, but if I meet the rock, I know I'm going to feel inadequate and inferior because he's so beautiful and the brother work out. I mean, I don't have to meet the rock. There, there's, there's guys right here that, that do that. Pastor Adam work and do that to me when I'm around him. Like, oh, all right, all right. Well, at least just don't crack. Hey, he came to himself. Isaiah came to himself when he sees the king, the Lord Almighty. And then, and then we read, then one of the, one of the seraphim flew to me, he says, with a live coal with a live coal in his hand, which he had taken with tongs from the altar. With it, he touched my mouth. And he said, see, this has touched your lips. Your guilt has been taken away. Your sin is atoned for. The king makes us right with him. Coal back then was, was a way of purifying something or someone. You see, the king, God Almighty, could have just let him sit and soak in his weakness and his vulnerability, but God did not leave him there. You see, you need to come to the Lord vulnerable and open and recognizing that he is the king. For us today, the Lord did this through the atoning work of Jesus Christ on the cross. Uh, he has taken away our sins and the shame. And, and, and those who have, who have done this by, by confessing your lips, you've confessed with your lips that he is Lord. You're now right with God. All other small K kings don't do that. But I know a big K king that does and his name is God. Then it says, then I heard, then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, whom shall I send and who will go for us? And I said, Isaiah said, here I am, send me. The king wants to send you. The king wants to send you. When Isaiah, when Isaiah had this transformational monumental moment, he hears the Lord talking, asking the question, whom shall I send? Whom shall we send? Who will go for us? Who will do this work that is required of us? Who, who will help bring the kingdom on earth as it is in heaven? Now, Isaiah speaks up real quick and he says, send me, Lord. Here I am, send me. I got to tell you something. I love Denzel Washington. Come on. I love Denzel Washington. I think he's just awesome. And, and, but you know what? If I met him, I would first feel inadequate, like, oh, I would feel ugly. But, 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 but here's the thing. If he said, Jeff, I have these dogs. I have these dogs that need to be walked. I, ha I have a car that needs to be washed. Uh, do you know anyone who would, who, who would do this, who would wash the car and, and walk the dogs for free? Do you know anyone? I'm like, I would miss Mr. Denzel. I would miss Mr. Denzel. I, I would miss Denzel. I, I, I walk your dog. I walk your dog. I wash your car. I wash your car. That, that, that's, we would do that, right? Listen, God Almighty, who is holy, 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 is asking me, you, us, to pray and to help his kingdom to come. And he's asking for all of us to do his work. Not Denzel, God. Right. He has his kingdom work. Who will go for us? Who will do this work? And what is this kingdom work? What is this kingdom? The kingdom is Jesus Christ. The kingdom is at hand, Jesus we are part of the kingdom of God, followers of Jesus, representatives of heaven here on earth with the King, Jesus, living inside of us, helping God to do his work on earth as it is in heaven. Men, if the, if the Celtics head coach, Udoka, coach Udoka, Lakers coach, Darvin Ham, maybe billionaire Elon Musk, the Dodgers coach, Dave Roberts, uh, the director Spike Lee, Steven Spielberg, Christopher Nolan, 
or, or, or maybe one of your favorite past presidents, Donald Trump or Barack Obama, what if one of these men asked you to be a part of their team and, and, and they wanted you to do a job or a role or a mission that they were on? It wouldn't matter what it was, right? You would jump to the chance to get to work with them. You would. Brothers, men, really everybody. The king of kings is inviting us to do something on his team. The king, God himself, is asking us to be a part of his team. He, he doesn't want you to be a fan. It's not about being a fan. He wants you to get in the game. He wants you to suit up. I know you're looking for men. I know you're looking for, for something that takes courage and strength. I, I, I know you're bored when you go to church. I get that. I, I know you want to be a hero. I, I know you want to do something that matters. You want to be a world changer. God calls us to advance the kingdom into this world. And that is dangerous. You want something risky? That's dangerous. It, it, it has an enemy. The world, God has an enemy working against it, working against him. It, 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 is, it is eternal life or death for three billion people who have never heard Jesus' name. It's costing the lives right now of more martyrs and, and people being persecuted for their belief in Jesus more than ever before. When you are a part of that story, when you are part of that work, this work, you find purpose. There, there, is, there is nothing boring about it. And that's pretty risky. God is asking, whom shall I send? Strong men get involved with missions. Strong men are about evangelism. Strong men give financially. Strong men get involved in their church, his church. Strong men get involved with kids ministry and youth ministry. And all of this, is done with the backbone being prayer. As we end our time right now, I gotta tell you something, I've struggled. I've struggled with and if and how we should end our time. But I feel convicted and convinced to end our time this way. You see, you see the whole time we have been talking about the kingdom of God, his rule and reign and authority that he wants us to pray for here on earth, in our lives, over our land, our government, in your homes, your marriages, your, uh, over your kids, finances, relationships, job, your neighbors, uh, in our church and how you live your life. I introduce you to the king. His name is Jesus. Our God is a king. And this is what I want. If you were in a courtroom, you would have to stand when that judge walked in. You would have to stand. If a, police, if a police officer said, get on your knees, you should get on your knees. If the president of the United States, Republican or Democrat, walked in here, walked on that campus, walked in that home, you would have to honor them and you would have to stand. If you lived in a monarchy and you walked into the presence of a king, you would bow or you would get on your knees and kneel. My friends, the king is in the room and we are about to go to prayer. And we are gonna to pray to a king who is the ultimate judge, who has all the authority, and whose kingdom reign will never, ever, ever, ever end. You see, like, like other kings, their reign ends with their death. <laughs> but our God, our king defeated death and today is seated on the throne. So right now, this is what I want us all to do. Well, I, I, want, I want us all to get in a kneeling position. Campuses online, in the studio, at home, St. Louis Church Anywhere, Espanol, get in the aisles, find a position. Uh, I, I, want you, I want you to kneel. If you physically can, kneel to the King of Kings. If you are physically not able to do that, then I would ask you to just bow your head right now. Everybody, come on, find a space. I want us to kneel because the King is in the room as we pray to the Lord of Lords. Come on, let's kneel or you may bow. Come on, everybody right now, All Sandals Church. Oh God, you are holy, holy, holy. And right now we bow or, or we get on our knees before you, Lord, because you deserve our praise and our glory. All honor is to you, O oh Lord. Father, we thank you, dear God, that you're asking us to bring the kingdom to this earth. Father, I pray that, that we would do our best, Lord, to bring the kingdom to our spaces and our places and the areas that we have influence over, dear God. 
Father, you want to do something in our lives. Father, I don't, I don't care if it's a man or a woman in here, dear God. If it's a small K king and a small Q queen, dear God, that's fine. But dear God, there is a king who reigns forever. And that is you. Lord, help us to submit to you and help us to do what you called us to do. Father, speak to us right now. Speak to us right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. And we all said together, amen.